In the last video, we talked about normal goods, inferior goods, and the two types of normal goods, which are um, necessities and luxuries. We also talked about elasticities, particularly the income elasticity of demand, which we denoted as E sub X sub I comma M, which was equal to the partial derivative of X sub I star with respect to M multiplied by M over X sub I star. And I've also mentioned that um, this is not the only elasticity there is. There are other elasticities. And in this video, we'll be talking about one of them. Particularly, we'll be talking about the price elasticity of demand. So price elasticity of demand, as we know, is denoted by E x sub i pi, which would be equal to the partial derivative of x sub i star with respect to m multiplied by, uh, with respect to p sub i multiplied by p sub i over x sub i star. And saying that this is the price elasticity of demand is not actually accurate. This is what we call the own price of elasticity of demand because there are actually two types of price elasticities and this is one of them. The other price elasticity is cross price elasticity, which means that the uh, we're measuring the elasticity or how much the percent change in um, X sub I is as the prices or the price of the other good changes. So this would be denoted as E X of I comma P sub J equal to the partial derivative of X of I star over the par uh, with respect to P J multiplied by P J over x sub i star. And if we recall from the more basic microeconomics classes, the demand curve where the y-axis was actually price and the x-axis was q, we recall that our demand curve is actually downward sloping because of the law of demand, which means that as price increases, quantity demand decreases. And so we know that the elasticity, own price elasticity of demand is actually less than zero unless the good is actually a given good. A given good. Well, now you might be wondering, what is the significance or the importance of learning the own price elasticity of demand for a good? Well, for a consumer, it doesn't really make sense to be analyzing these things. However, for a firm who sells these goods, it's quite important to know whether the um, demand for the good is elastic or not. If, for example, the firm wants to increase the prices for a good, the firm has to consider whether the percent change in quantity is greater than the percent change in price or the other way around. Because if the firm decides to increase its prices, and the percent change in quantity is actually greater than the percent change in price, then the firm would actually be losing revenue because quantity changed by a larger proportion than price. Now, there are actually three classifications of own price elasticity. The first is elastic, which means that the percent change in quantity is actually larger than the percent change in price. The second is unit elastic, which means that the percent change in quantity and the percent change in price are equal. And the third is inelastic, which means that the percent change in quantity was smaller than the percent change in price. And to classify a good to be elastic or, or own price elastic, then E, X, I, P, I has to be greater than 
negative 1. Or less than negative 1. Less than negative 1. For unit elastic, EXIPI, EXIPI has to be equal to negative 1. And for inelastic, EXIPI has to be greater than negative 1. Some professors and some textbooks actually use a very similar or a transformed definition of this. They sometimes write this as the absolute value of EXIPI has to be greater than 1. And for unit elasticity, um, the absolute value of EXIPI, EXIPI has to be equal to 1. And for inelastic, um, the absolute value of EXIPI has to be less than 1. Either of these expressions is fine as long as it can be shown that the unit or the good is actually elastic, unit elastic, or inelastic. Moving on to the cross price elasticity of demand, we have to think of this as how will consumption change as the price of the other good changes? Well, for example, the consumer consumes only two goods, good one and good two. If the price of good two increases, then the consumer would consume less of good two and more of good one. In this case, these two goods are actually complements or uh, substitutes of each other, gross substitutes. On the other hand, if the consumption of good one decreases as the price of good two increases, then the two goods are actually gross complements of each other. So what this basically means is that when E X I P J is greater than zero, when E X I P J is greater than zero, which means that the quantity consumed of good I increases as the price of good J increases, then the two goods are gross substitutes. On the other hand, when E X I P J EXIPJ is less than zero, which means that the uh, quantity consumed for good I decreases as the price of good J increases, then the two goods are actually gross complements. Gross complements.